Let's go to the teams that helped their quarterbacks the least this offseason. And it's the team uh, that lost Devontae Adams, the Green Bay Packers, Danny. Yeah, this one, the Packers are basically saying, you know what? We're really spoiled. We have a back-to-back -back MVP, and it doesn't matter who is around him. That's the message to me is what they're saying, which is the ultimate compliment you can play to Aaron Rodgers, but it also doesn't do him any favors either. When you're talking about Randall Cobb at 31 years of age, and I know he's Aaron's boy, but still the skill level has been dropping. Sammy Watkins, who his last great season was in 2019 when he was a role player on that Chiefs offense, and they're banking on very similar to what we saw with Devontae Adams when they drafted him out of Fresno State. And everyone was like, who? Everyone's asking that question about Christian Watson out of North Dakota State, who they spent their 34th, uh, 34th draft pick with, who I do think Aaron Rodgers will turn Christian Watson into a star. He's 6'5", 208 pounds. And then keep an eye on another receiver that no one knows about. It's their fourth round pick in Romeo Dubs. He's out of Nevada. I think you might have seen him play in person too, doing some of our work with CBS Sports Network. He's another big target. And I think this is just you're spoiled when you have Aaron Rodgers because you just know he's going to make every receiver, no matter who's around him, great. And I think that'll happen yet again with the Packers uh, with their philosophy. Another team that maybe uh, didn't help out their quarterback a whole lot this offseason. We're going to talk about the Chiefs. Look, they lost the Super Bowl. They improved that offensive line. Now you don't have Tyree Kill anymore. And it doesn't really matter who you bring in because you just can't replace them. What is your concern level or do you have any concern level about the Chiefs? I do. I am mildly concerned. I mean, there's no doubt Patrick Mahomes, the talent is there, the ability to make all the th throws, the intangibles. But what I worry about is when they pay him as much money as they did, and you see the similar trend with Aaron Rodgers, you can't keep the band together. There's only so much money to go around with the salary cap. So they made the choice to go ahead and move on from Tyree Kill and trust that Travis Kelsey is going to be a bigger portion of that offense. And as we've seen the Chiefs as of late, the offense has not been as prolific as it was earlier in his career. I do like Juju Smith-Suster uh, on a incentive-heavy contract where he has a ton of incentive to play well. I don't know if he's going to be, provide the same sort of spark that Tyree Kill proved to this offense. But there's a great debate, and I've had it with Grady Quinn on here a bunch. Who meant more to this offense stretching the field vertically? Was it Tyreek Hill with that insane speed? Or was it Travis Kelsey going across the middle, being able to stretch the field vertically up the middle? We see, we saw the bet that Andy Reid met said, we'll keep the tight end who's a freak of nature and we'll move on from the receiver. And then we'll see how that experiment works out. Danny, one more NFL team that was voted again. You can find the CBSSports.com uh, that helped their quarterback the least there. Let's talk about the Ravens. And, and this is interesting because over the past week or so when we've been talking about the Ravens, I either have people on one end or the other here. I have Ryan Harris saying this is a top five team when you look at the roster there. But they don't have Hollywood Brown anymore. He headed west. How do you feel about the Ravens going into the season? Uh, it's perplexing to me why they don't give Lamar Jackson a true breakout wide receiver, like a top five receiver in the NFL. But what I think it says is the Ravens are saying, we don't play football like the rest of the NFL. We're going to play the way we can win with our quarterback. And that philosophy is we're going to run the ball down your throat, both with our backfield and with our quarterback. And we're going to get guys wide open by scheme. We don't need a top five quarterback which is a risky proposition, although it has worked. If you go back to uh, Lamar Jackson's MVP season, they led the NFL in rushing with a record-setting 209 yards per game. Then defenses start to adjust. It dropped off in 2020, back to 191 yards per game. And then this was the worst year rushing they've had with Lamar Jackson at quarterback with just 145 yards a game because the backfield was so banged up. So to me, it says that the Raymond, uh, Ravens behind offensive coordinator Greg Roman are saying, we're not going to play football the way everybody else does. We're going to have a quarterback who throws it for 5,000 yards and 40-plus touchdowns. We're going to be physical. We're going to run the ball at you. And we have an unbelievably dynamic runner at the quarterback position, and we're going to utilize him as such. We don't care how, what his passing stats look like. We're going to be a run-heavy offense. That, to me, is the clear message they're sending by not getting him that help he needs on the perimeter. Danny Cannell, we appreciate it. Uh, it seems like the NFL season was so far away. We are now less than two months away. So it will be here before you know it. We'll talk to you very soon. There it is. The NFL on CBS returning September 11th. The official season kicking off September 8th. That means we are now less than two months away.
Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.